I'm Shovel, and in this video I'd like to share with you a troubleshooting technique for cars and trucks and machinery and pretty much anything else that moves that you may not have thought about that sounds complicated and expensive, but I promise you it's neither one of those things. If you've got an action camera or even the camera on your phone and you've got a desktop or laptop computer, you probably have everything that you need to do this. Now, a few years ago, a YouTuber named Steve Mould put together a video on something called motion amplification, which involved a lot of expensive machinery and software and complicated stuff that is, is frankly not for the rest of us but it doesn't have to be that complicated to get pretty good results just using free and cheap stuff. So before I show you how to do it, I'll kind of give you a description of what it is. Whenever you've got machinery that's moving in any particular way, there's a good chance that if it's starting to fail, it's going to start moving in directions it's not supposed to move or it's gonna start moving more than it should. I'm talking about stuff like a wobbly pulley or a loose bolt or something like that that's allowing motion outside of the range that it is engineered to move in and you may not be able to see it. You may not see it either because it's under the car while you're driving and so you're not under there to see it, or it may be that it's moving so subtly that you're not able to pick up the specific part that's moving the way that it's not supposed to move. And so wouldn't it be great if you could use your camera phone or something like that to pick up those movements and then identify only the parts that are actually moving out of sync with everything else and then pinpoint your repairs. So with that said, since I don't have anything that's actually broken right now in a way that would be ideal for troubleshooting. We're just going to look at the normal function of the rear suspension on this car. And if I can't get a great result, I'm going to deliberately loosen something just so we can see it move. So let's go ahead and set up. To make this video easier to shoot, I've got this 1996 Mustang up on this wooden cribbing. That gives me plenty of vertical space. And of course, I've got a light over here because, well, you need a light for videography. If you don't have cribbing or a light, well, watch that video right up there if you want to learn about the cribbing. Uh, as for the light, I mean, you probably have a drop light or a flashlight or something else of that nature, or it might just be enough to be on a bright, sunny day. If you have some sort of a movement or vibration or sound that you need to try and diagnose while the car is moving, you might need to get a camera that has like a magnet stuck on it that you can stick underneath the vehicle wherever you want to do it. There are two important parts of this. One of them is that the camera needs to be rigidly mounted with respect to some frame of reference because you're looking for motion and of course you want to have some background reference for what the motion is against. So for example, this one has a magnetic connection which means that whatever it connects to, it connects to firmly, it doesn't flap around. Or if you're doing it statically around your house, you can do it with a tripod that just puts it against the ground or puts it against a solid part of the car or whatever so that you have a steady frame of reference against which the movement's going to exist. One other challenge is this particular camera right here, this is a little Polaroid guy, this one does not have a way for me to turn off its automatic stabilization function, and the automatic stabilization means that I can't use this for any kind of motion amplification while the car is in motion, because whenever the car is accelerating or decelerating or going around a corner, it completely shifts the whole image and obliterates the technique we're about to use. So you may want to experiment with any kind of stabilization, turn it on or off, it depends on how it's done mechanically inside your camera, whether it's a software function of it or a moving lens. And so that's the kind of thing that you'll have to kind of experiment with, but you'll get it figured out pretty quickly with your own hardware. And uh, thankfully it doesn't cost anything to try. So try multiple times. Anyway, let's go ahead and get set up. I'm gonna take this camera here and I'm gonna stick it to the differential because that's rigid to the axle and that means I'll be able to see whatever's on there. I'm also gonna turn this one on and run it just because that way I'll have two separate points of capture and I can utilize whichever one of them looks better for the purpose of this video. So um, I'll get started. After you've got your camera set up, the next step of course is to generate the motion that you're looking to capture. And so in this case, I'm not gonna be running the car, I'm gonna be bouncing the suspension up and down, but if it's something on the engine, naturally you would want to have the engine running for it to show you what it's gonna do. Anyway, I'm gonna hunt my car now. It's usually not necessary to go at it for that long, unless that's what you're into. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to make sure I had enough footage so that I could definitely have something to share with you. Anyway, the next step is to bring that inside, plug it into the computer. Let's take a look at what we find out. Once you've imported your footage into your video editor, you want to cut it down so that it's just the part that you care about so you don't have a whole bunch of before and after footage that isn't really going to be useful to you. And then once you've cut it down, just copy it and paste it right back into the same timeline. So just go ahead and pop it right in there, duplicate it, and then move it up in the timeline to directly on top of itself. Then what you'll do is put your playhead just somewhere in the middle of that, and we'll go over here and make sure that the top one is selected, not the bottom one, and we'll choose under blend mode here, difference. And that's going to make it so that the only thing we can see here is what's different from one frame to the other, meaning the difference between the top one and the bottom one. Since these are exactly the same footage and they're at the exact same alignment to each other, they're not going to show anything because there is no difference between them. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. 
Let's go ahead and zoom in real far so that we can move this the smallest amount possible. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, zoom into the very beginning here. And I'm going to take the top one and move it over just one notch. That's the smallest amount that this software lets me move it over. And you can notice that there's a little bit of stuff appearing here in this image. So now if I zoom back out again and I play this, we'll see some stuff emerging. So let's go ahead and pause this right here. So most of this stuff here you can tell is what's supposed to be moving. Like you can see the suspension member moving, you can see the gas tank moving up and down because that's attached to the body that I'm rocking up and down by pushing on it. You can also see in this video that the cribbing at the bottom is moving and the reason for that is that this camera was mounted to the axle. So the axle isn't moving relative to the camera, but because of the air in the tire, that means that the ground and therefore of course the cribbing is moving relative to the axle. The tire is compressing a little bit and we see an outline of the cribbing here. But if we play the video, we can see one thing that's flashing and moving that's not supposed to be moving, and that's this guy right here, which is the shock absorber, and that's the part that I deliberately loosened in order to make this video. That part shouldn't be moving relative to the axle, and since we can see it moving, we know that that's the place we should focus our troubleshooting. And sometimes certain things, especially on machines that are vibrating quickly, will have frequencies that don't quite show up as well, and that's when you can move your footage around a little bit and get a different perspective on it. So in this case, I moved the difference between the two scenes by quite a bit. And then when I press play again, we're going to see certain things highlighted a little bit differently because the amount of time between those two events is going to be a little bit different. So here you can see a little bit more continuous visibility on certain parts of it. Some of that is going to be because the light may have slightly changed. Perhaps a cloud moved over the sky or something like that. And that means that the amount of light total in the image is going to be a bit different. And the further you move these two timelines apart, the more that difference is going to become apparent. It also means that certain things that were flickering really quickly that we weren't able to see on a shorter offset are going to become more continuously lit up. Like you can see this bolt right here on the lower shock mount, that's going to stay a little bit more consistently lit up. This isn't only useful for troubleshooting chassis parts, this is also useful for motors, anything that rotates or vibrates or anywhere that catching motion in the act will be useful to you in a way that just looking at straight video might not be. You could even use it for cool stuff like taking a look at these bees pollinating my raspberry bushes or looking at security footage and seeing if you can see a different thing moving that wasn't apparent in the initial watch through. If you're a professional mechanic or you work in building maintenance, you might be able to use this kind of tool in order to convince to your customer or to your boss that you actually need to proceed with some work and that way they don't think you're just shaking them down or pulling their chain. Wait, not this. I don't mean that, I mean the video thing. Anyway, if you did find this helpful, let me know in the comments down below. And I'm pretty close to 2,000 subscribers. I always hate to ask, like, hey, like, subscribe, all that stuff. But, you know, like, 2,000 would be a kind of nice number. Anyway, thanks for watching.